as I've said, the work in the appendix two is only worth two boxes on the key. So how are we going to get credit uh, in the remainder of the key? And this is where our planning sheet uh, comes in. So if you have a look at the blank planning sheet, and you'll see that it starts with an introductory paragraph dealing with your wider issues. And this sets the context for the transaction. And we're going to look at that in a bit more detail in a later set of videos. If you want to see some ideas, you can have a look um, at the illustrative answer at the end of this video. Your first um, part of your report then will deal with the calculations, and that's just simple, uh, one sentence, two sentences maybe, on each of the calculations and perhaps a sensitivity. In some of the questions, for example, in the one that we're doing um, in this uh, mock, you also are asked to discuss the methodology. So there are four methodologies that you need to consider. And these are the pros and cons um, of each of them. And it's only going to be a couple of sentences, one pro, one con. So here we've got NPV, DCF, payback, and break-even. And I think break evens the most likely to come up given that it's uh, the investment criterion that uh, Sequin uses for its new cinemas. So having done methodology, if it comes up in the requirement, and only if, then you need to uh, move on to your assumptions. So I asked you when you put your Appendix 2 together to state your assumptions at the bottom of your appendix, and this is for working purposes. It makes sure that you have identified, you learn to identify as many assumptions as you can underlying your calculations. But it's quite difficult to write a two or a three sentence paragraph about an individual assumption. So what I do is um, I group them together. Four groupings, revenue, variable costs and the GP, fixed costs and the investment. And then sometimes there's a fifth, which is the timing of the um, investment. It may be on a very short time scale, which is going to be particularly demanding of management, given that it's quite a small management team. Revenue, particularly in this case, there's a lot to talk about. And so you could, depending on the transaction and the information that you're given, split that into volume and price. So those are your um, assumption groups. And then you need to develop your answer by setting out your assumptions, stating what your concern is about the assumption. It could be too high, too low. There might be no basis for it. You're just given a number out of nowhere. And then demonstrating your scepticism by using the information in the exam paper and from your AI to question the assumptions. You're also then going to develop a discussion. Do you remember we've got to talk about the um, benefits and the risks? And in this case, we've got a business trust or ethical type issue in terms of our reliance on Taylor Stone. So if you have a look at the planning sheet, you'll see that you're going to do three two-sentence paragraphs on benefits, another three on the risks, and then you're going to deal with your, uh, the issue with Taylor Stone in a single three-sentence paragraph that covers what I call PPI. The parties involved, so this is obviously Taylor Stone and um, Sequin, the problem, which is the over-reliance, and then the issue. What is the issue for Sequin because of that potential over-reliance or heavy reliance on Taylor Stone? And that will be the, the part of your discussion. So in terms of getting information for that, 
you use the exam paper exhibit. In this exam it's 18A. I'm not quite sure what the numbers are going to be in terms of exhibit numbers, but probably 18 or 18 and 19, 18A, 18B, something like that. There'll be two exhibits that relate to um, requirement two. And for example, these are some points that we have picked out um, from, the, uh, from the exam paper, from the question. So normally their, for example, normally their criterion is that cinema should be 15 kilometers apart. But this, in this instance, they're only going to be 10 kilometers apart. Is that good news or is it bad news? And probably it'll be both. So there'll be contradictory arguments. Similarly, uh, we've got the issue of the lease renewal, occupancy rates, that's going to help you demonstrate your scepticism. They're looking at the uh, Grimsby uh, demographics as a parallel uh, to Long Eaton. And the, here timing is coming in because they are looking to do this by October uh, 2018. That's only a few months away. And it includes August, which in the UK is a big holiday month. So really, how much work is actually going to be done and could it be late? If it's late, is that going to have a big or a small impact on, uh, on sequin? Probably not too bad, but as long as it's ready by the beginning of December for the Christmas holidays and the uh, peak, uh, peak audiences during December. Then finally, in terms of strategy discussion, they're looking to focus on students and they're looking to broaden their range of films. So there's a lot of information in the exam paper and this is typical because what it does is it enables the examiner to ensure that you focus your discussion. You take the ideas that you've generated from the AI and in your preparation and then you apply it to the specific information that is in the exam paper. Having uh, done your, uh, demonstrated your scepticism and completed your discussion, you then need to draw your conclusions and make your recommendations. So, there are uh, four conclusions. The first is on the numbers. The second is on the key assumption. The third is the main benefit or risk. And the fourth is your decision, whether, that, um, whether sequin should proceed or not. It's very rare that they don't proceed at all. However, it does occur sometimes, and it did in a recent exam, that they don't proceed on the current terms which then, of course, drops down to the first of your four recommendations, which is to negotiate. Just before we go to recommendations, there's then your a fifth conclusion if you have an ethical issue. And you remember from the work that we did last week, your conclusion is your risk assessment, high, medium or low, but more importantly, with a reason. So then looking at recommendations, Four recommendations for the main part of your uh, work on the transaction. Negotiate, but be specific as to what you're going to negotiate about. Don't just be general. So it's one particular term or maybe two. <clears throat> you're going to need some more information to um, support or deal with the scepticism that you've got about the assumptions. Again, be specific. So don't just say do market research. They need to do market research on some particular aspect. And you need to um, mitigate the risks that you have um, discussed um, in the benefits and risks section part of your report. For all of your recommendations, <clears throat> they need to be specific. They need to be commercial and they need to be action orientated. You want to tell the board to do something. And I set mine out by going, the board should, colon, and then a set of bullet points, all starting with an active verb. So what I want you to do now 
is using the uh, information in the question and your preparation from your AI, complete your planning sheet and then have a look at the illustrative uh, planning sheet, illustrative answer, just to compare how I have uh, structured the information and the sort of points that I'm making, particularly in the third column, to develop my discussion.